Welcome to module 11 of our management accounting class. We're almost there. This module all about performance measurement. And in this video, I want to focus in on one aspect of performance measurement called the balanced scorecard. Okay, so congratulations, I've just promoted you. You are now CEO of a bank. Wow, what a promotion, you're CEO of a bank. That's the good news. The bad news is revenues are down, profits are down, share price is down. You're unhappy, your board of directors is unhappy, your shareholders are unhappy, everybody's unhappy, and you're the CEO, so they're unhappy with you. <laughs> Um, but you think to yourself, well, wait a minute, every time I go by the bank, it's busy, right? There's big lineups. It seems like it's a popular place to be. And what you underappreciated was, yes, it's busy, but the customers are not happy standing in the line, right? Well, I, I suppose this character looks happy, but 90% of your customers are unhappy. That guy would be happy no matter what, I suppose, just a happy person. Uh, but your customers are not happy with your bank and uh, for, for one reason or another. And it looks to me like the level of service might not be delivering what they desire. Uh, and in fact, you survey those customers and you learn that they think long lines stink. They are an unhappy group. They think long lines stink. So here you are, the CEO and your board of directors, your shareholders, everybody tells you we want good financial outcomes. We want revenues up. We want stock price up. We want uh, profits up. You know, these are the things we're looking for. And so, of course, you as CEO kind of lock in on those numbers. And we accountants are guilty of locking in on financial metrics. What the balanced scorecard suggests is, yes, financial metrics are important, but there are other things to consider. So here's what the balanced scorecard says. Not only should you be worried about financial metrics, you should also be worried about your employee metrics. Oh, I'm going to run out of space. I can already tell. Employee metrics, and the key ones there are learning and growth for your employees, right? Are your employees good at their job and getting better at their job? That's something that you should be considering employee learning and growth. Uh, you should also be learning or worried about your own internal processes, your own internal efficiencies, like how efficient is the company running? So I'll call that internal processes. And you should also be worried about your customer. Of course, that should make some good sense. So the balance scorecard says you should balance your concerns between these one, two, three, four items. You should be worried about all four of them, basically in equal measure. But what we find is especially us accountants type, but a lot of CEO types obsess over the financial. And the reason is it's their job is on the line as a result of the financial stuff. So they're like locked in on that because their board of directors wants them to be in. So, so they need to be. But what the balance scorecard suggests is we should sort of spend, give equal weight to all of these items. And the balance scorecard may even suggest that the three on the left are more important than the one on the right. But let me explain by our long wait times example. So let's say we as a bank have become aware like this is a major issue at our bank that needs solving. Well, how would you solve it? Let's just say there's lots of branches. You're not sitting in the branch. You're in some head office in New York or something like this, but you got branches all over the, the country. Um, so you can't be there. You would have to train your managers to like Oh, when there's a line of, you know, that's more than uh, a few people deep, we got to put more tellers out. We got to sort of triage the line. We got to make, keep that line moving. And so that would involve management training and likely some employee training to make them move more quickly because obviously things are going too slowly. So employee and manager training on lines, right? on lines, you know, keeping the lines short, customer wait times down. And not only do we need that when we're talking about a balance scorecard, a balance scorecard says, okay, figure out what you need to do and then actually try to measure it. So to say, oh, I need more employee training and manager training on lines, you would want numbers to this. You would want to say something like, uh, I'll just, I won't write it, something like 100% of managers and 90% of employees all attend a mandatory training on reducing lines. Now, 
as somebody that works at a company that has lots of mandatory trainings, I can tell some bright eyed person had a balanced scorecard like this. And they said, Oh, we need all of our employees to attend a mandatory training. And the mandatory training was terrible. And at times they can be counterproductive. So not only like, so again, us accountants, we can go, oh, okay, well, we need hundred percent mandatory training. And then we deliver bad ones. So that's something important, right? Not only do we need to, uh, measure things, but we need to execute as well. Internal processes kind of gets to execution, but let's talk about that. So let's just say we did a good training and, you know, our managers are putting out more employees and, and, uh, uh, how will we know if it's working? Well, we got to measure what wait time is reduced. So lower customer wait time right? That's, that's the root of the problem here. Customers are waiting too long. So we lower customer wait time. Again, we got to measure it. Our average customer wait time before this is six minutes. And after this, it's two minutes because we sped things up so much, right? But you would want to measure it. And by the way, both of these, when you're measuring it, you've got to hold somebody accountable. If you just go, oh, we're measuring it, but who cares? Somebody's got to feel like they're going to be rewarded if it's successful and they're going to be in trouble if it's not right They're They are responsible and we need to make somebody uh, feel responsible for this. And ultimately we CEO are responsible for it because we're responsible to our shareholders. Uh, okay. So let's say we do this. Employees are better trained and, and managers are better trained at keeping the line length down, the wait times down and the wait times do drop. Well, what would I expect to see? Well, I would expect to see customer satisfaction go up and specifically around wait time when we survey them you know we will ask them 20 questions well one of them is you know i believe i waited uh too uh long in line you know strongly agree strongly disagree right and you would hope that they're saying oh you know what the wait time's not too bad right the the wait time is improving and that should be uh reflected so maybe uh, customer satisfaction happiness score goes from a two out of five to a four out of five something like this right and again you're going to measure it and you're going to uh make you're going to have some responsibility over that so uh our employees are better trained our customers aren't waiting in these long, tedious lines as much. Uh, customers seem happier with our bank. Well, what's going to happen? Hopefully, revenues, share price, profit go up. Um, now, what the balance scorecard is very smart to point out, these are leading indicators. What does that mean? It means you got to do one, two, and three before you can get four, which is a lagging indicator. You're, you can't start with the revenues and say, I want revenues to go up and work backwards from there. You actually got to start on the left side of this equation. So that's, um, uh, Something that, again, I, I think I've mentioned, we accountants get wrong, right? We lock in on those financial metrics. We obsess over them. We're trained on them. Boards of directors want to see them, so we focus on them. Uh, Balance Scorecard says you should focus on other things, and if you want to put numbers to it, this is how you would do it. So that is a key concept we introduce this chapter. We also talk about return on investment, residual income, and don't 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 transfer pricing, one of the more challenging and interesting topics of the semester. But we'll start with a balanced scorecard problem, and that's next. I can't wait to get started. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.